I'm here with David Sterling today. I've just been able to have a, a lunch. Uh, David is the founder of doTERRA. Did I say that right, you David? Did. You did. And I've just heard the most wonderful zig, uh, zag story today, all the way from an engineer to a founder of a, of a major essential oils company. Uh, David, I'd love you to just share, if you would, really quickly, uh, just a brief synopsis of how do you go from a career to uh, in a corporate world, to owning your own company, and particularly if you focus on you always had a side job. you want to just give us a quick sketch overview of, of, of how you got here? Well, uh, I, I think for myself, there was always, uh, there was, I, I've always, since I was six years old, um, always looked for an opportunity to be able to earn money with any new thing that you learn. And, uh, and it was just kind of an extension of that, as you as you go through life and as you watch different people and you learn different things, uh, um, you're, you're always looking to implement those things to, to be able to earn money, to yeah. be able to start a business. And, and as, you, as you go through and that life experience grows uh, and uh, you gain you know, more tools and more tools, it's just kind of a, it's just, it's an automatic extension of that, I think. So you've had a you've had a, a side job or a side business pretty much your entire career. Even uh, you started at Nobel, correct? In in IT, and uh, uh, you had a, a side job even at that period. We, we've uh, done everything from uh, uh, cars, you know, fix up and sell cars to uh, to uh, uh, running computer businesses, um, you know, and uh, building uh, building PCs back in the day when. Nobody else was doing that. That's the one thing is you learn is that is that if you, you do something, you can only do it for so long, and then you get uh, many other people that figure it out, and mm -hmm. they want to come into it, and they're willing to do it for a lot less, and then it becomes a commodity, and then it's time to move on. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you always have to you know kind of keep moving. So we had a conversation uh, over lunch that... Uh, that uh, individuals have frequently said to you, I wouldn't dare do that, I wouldn't dare have a business, how'd you dare do that? What would you say to my listeners that, that are having a, a little bit of fear of starting their own thing on the side? Well, I, I think the people that usually say that, say it because they, uh, they, because they, they view you as taking risks. They, they're, they're risk adverse and they, they, they feel secure and safe in the job, the corporate job or whatever it is that they have. And uh, what they what they fail to realize is that, at least for myself, um, any of those things that I've ever done, it was it was never a roll of the dice. It was never a 50-50 chance. It was always a 90% chance of success with only a 10% chance of failure, uh, or I would never have done it. Mm -hmm. And so, to me, it, it, it wasn't risky at all. So, is your assessment that there's more risk in the corporate world than knowing your own thing? Would you go that far? There's more than people think. Uh, you know, I look at today's world. It's uh, job security is your ability to produce. That's the bottom line. And uh, and outside of that, really, anybody's job is is only as good until this next uh, layoff that the company has. And Brilliant. So, so I want to hit just for one more quick second the zigzagging of a career, going from an IT guy in Novell to then New Skin in IT. Then to uh, Young Libby, is that correct? Where you uh, became the CEO, you ran the company, is that correct? Pretty big zigzags in a career. And then the plunge into the brave world of ownership of a company and, in essence, self money and bootstrapping. Talk through the motions of those dramatic things that you put in Well, that's, that's hard. I mean, that's just the whole whole life experience. And, uh, and there's there's many things that happen along the way. But, uh, you know, when I. When I look at uh, when I look at what prompted us to start this business, and yes, we did fund it ourselves. Yes, we did leverage all cash and assets that we had to the to the very nth degree. But I I never doubted that we would be successful. Yeah. And again, it's because I I understood my business model, I understood my products, I understood the power of my products, I understood the demand for my products. And, uh, and then from there, it was a matter of, uh, of coming together with the right team of people that have those abilities and those skills. I certainly don't have all the abilities and the skills. And, uh, and the group of people that I work with, uh, you know, I think most of them are a lot smarter than I am. And, uh, and so it's surrounding you with those kinds of people that, uh, you know, uh, have the abilities and skills and also have, have the, the, the 
integrity. You know you can trust them implicitly. Partnerships are dangerous. They're inherently dangerous. Uh, they almost always go bad. And so uh, that was fully in my mind when I started this thing. Uh, anyway, uh, from there, you, you go forward. Timing's important, too. Uh, you know, one thing that's, that I always try to keep in mind is people come to me with ideas frequently. And, and sometimes they're good ideas, but the market demand is not there mm -hmm. for them. And I look at them and say, you know, you have to create the market demand. Now you can do it, but it's really hard. Yeah. It takes a lot of time and, lots, and usually a lot of money to create demand for something. If you have a sense for what the market is already looking for, and, and if you can throw some timing into that where, where things are just in your favor mm -hmm. uh, with that demand and you provide service or a product uh, that fits that uh, that demand or that need, it's really pretty easy. So that's the channel. In the Porter model, that's what we we refer to as the channel. So if you can plug into an existing channel, it's far easier than creating your own channel. Yeah, I agree. That's just, uh, just brilliant uh, observations to made. Any final comments you'd like to make to all these would-be entrepreneurs? I know how difficult, I can emphasize with how difficult it was when you had that chance to look at venture capital and then you made the decision. I have to believe at this stage you're so grateful that you did that. Well, I, I'll, I'll drop back one step further. I remember leaving um, a very secure job, a very good job I had with a major company. And, uh, and I sat down there twisting my arm to stay at the time. And uh, I finally, uh, finally said something to the, the, inter the person I was talking to. He was the high level person in the company. And I finally just said, you know, I, I always told myself that if I ever woke up one day and found that I was connected to the umbilical cord, mm -hmm. so to speak, to the company, uh, and that was why I was there, that I would, uh, I would leave. And I just said, uh, this job, uh, you've treated me well, I appreciate everything, but it's soul diminishing. It's soul diminishing. Little by little, it's sucking, you know, sucking your life, and uh, it's just time to and it was really interesting because he looked at me at the time and he had no idea what to say to that. Mm -hmm. No idea how to respond. I don't think anybody had ever given that particular <laughs> reason for, 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 for quitting a job and for moving on. So I, I would just say, um, you know, don't be fearful. Um, you know, don't be reckless either. You, when, you, when you take off to go do a new business thing, do your homework. Make sure you, you've got a 80, 90 percent chance of success and then there's really very little risk. And it's a whole lot funner building something yourself than building something for someone else. Yeah, boy, now those are words to live by. It's better to build something for yourself than for someone else. And uh, again, number one, zag, drive to profitability. Number two, add resource and process. Number three, is add a scale element. David's been a brilliant example of doing that. I so appreciate you spending a few minutes with me. And uh, thank you, and go forward and succeed.